Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Shanti Kumara Swami Street. Welcome to this lesson of Wednesdays with Ewat with English with a Twist. Uh, it is lesson 59 of um, the series and I hope all is well with all of you. And hi Gerald, do let me know where you're from as you're coming in. Say hi, I'd love to see you. It's a lovely afternoon here in London, 14th of March. Hi Amit, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining. So we are, yes, lesson 59. So another week and we're going to be 60, the big 6-0. Another milestone in Wednesdays with Ewart. Hi Keiko, lovely to see you. So as you um as you are ready to, to uh, am I setting up? What do you mean, Amit? As you saying, are you setting up? I am rather late today, so I do apologize. I had a number of things I need to get done. And before I realized it, it was time. And I thought, oh gosh, uh, that was, um, I was running a bit late. So I do apologize for the delay. I think we're two minutes late. Okay, what are we talking about today? Now, first of all, reminding you that English with a Twist is where we business professionals we get together, we chat for an hour, and we look at learning how to explore the world of business uh, through the English language. So if you are someone who is in business, who needs English, you need to communicate confidently and comfortably in English for work, then this is the place to be. If you're looking for exam preparation, if you're looking for anything else like grammar help or uh, general English, then I'm afraid English with a twist is not the place for you. So here we are learners who have a comfortable level of English. So you're looking at mid-intermediate. So if you're looking at the Council of Europe, you're looking at the B1 level at least. If you're a super beginner, you're going to find this lessons very hard. I know this is the first time I'm mentioning this, but I've noticed that a number of people who are following the classes sometimes find it difficult or ask me questions and it's not really relevant for what we're about here at English with a Twist. For those of you who don't know what uh, we're about or wants to have more uh, information about um, English with a Twist, then do have a look at my website EnglishWithATwist.com. That is where you will be able to see what's available, what resources I share with you. And if you're interested also in my online coaching programs, then take a look there. In fact, I've got a new page on my online coaching programs that will give you a lot more information about what I offer uh, in terms of one-to-one -one coaching for you and for your colleagues. And if you know anybody who thinks would be would be would benefit from being part of this eWord community then do encourage them to join so if you haven't joined join it going to the um, eWord uh, website and sign up today so in today's class if you're all ready we're going to look at what we're discussing today now don't forget that every month we have a theme so being March our theme this month is about business vocabulary but more importantly in particular, business vocabulary that you find in business news. Now, if you are a business professional, you need to keep up to date with business news. I'm hoping that you regularly keep up to date. Last week in lesson 58, you told me that you do read your, your you keep up to date with the business news through online newspapers, through um, traditional newspapers, maybe you have news feeds and that's where you get your information. Maybe you listen to the news, maybe you watch the news or you read the news, whichever way. I also shared with you an app that we are, I, um, a squid called Squid, which is a new news aggregator. So I don't know if any of you have downloaded that free app and whether you've explored it, have it had a chance one week from last um, last lesson to explore that and whether you've chosen your um, your topics that you're interested in and I shared with you things like startup entrepreneurs you know there are lots of different topics that you can have related to the business news 
So what's been happening in the business news, for example, in your area, in your sector, in your country, any new developments going on? So always as a business professional is something that you need to keep up to date, not just for your professional development, but so that it helps you also engage with your co-workers and also with your clients. And it sounds that you're very much um, in the know, you know what's happening around the world when it comes to business news. It also develops your business vocabulary when reading, watching business news in English. Remember last week we talked about the vocabulary that we can explore. You will see a lot of new words and a lot of expressions, buzzwords. So following on from this theme, um, I want to introduce you to where how you can explore new language through business headlines, news headlines. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at understanding. I'm going to help you to understand business news headlines. Uh, now, how many of you find reading business headlines difficult? Even news headlines, they don't actually have to just be to do with business. How many of you find it difficult understanding? I know a couple of you mentioned it in last week's lesson that um, reading headlines can often be confusing. So any of you find it difficult? I'm not just going to refresh my business page, the Facebook page, so I can see comments coming through. Headlines are very difficult, not just as, as English learners, but also um, for proficient speakers. Often you look at a business headline and you need to try and understand what it means. So in today's lesson, um, exactly, so I take it this is Maria speaking, phrasal verbs and headlines, exactly. Um, and you know, there are all sorts of reasons why headlines can be difficult. I know, for example, whenever I go back to Italy and I'll be uh, looking at a newspaper, I mean, I can look at it online, of course, you know, the various Italian newspapers, and often I'll look at a, um, a headline and the headline um, often requires you to understand the context of, you know, of what this article is going to be. Sometimes you need cultural context. Uh, so it, it's really difficult to understand just from the headline. So it takes a while, but gradually you can get, you can get used to it. Uh, so yeah, so here Lea Singh's saying that headline is difficult for me. Um, Maria, you said that, yes, headlines with phrasal verbs, especially in English, we love our phrasal verbs. Um, so, you know, it's difficult. So I'm going to help you in today's lesson to look at how we can explore some headlines. So I, I, I've selected a few headlines and I'm going to share with you what I mean. So in today's lesson, I mean, it is hard and there was one that captured it. And by the way, there will be a link to this post. This was a post I wrote in uh, uh, for last week's um, audio blog. And I will send the, show you the link, attach the link to the show notes for this lesson. Excuse me, I've got a dry throat. Mm. Mm. Okay, so the first headline I want to show you is that I saw last week when I was preparing for uh, the blog post and for this lesson was this. Corbyn's Brexit. Having his cake and eating it. So Corbyn's Brexit plan. Sorry, Corbyn's Brexit plan. Having his cake and eating it. Okay, I think what will be useful for today's class, and do I do apologize if I'm not as organized as I am normally, it's because I was late coming into this class. I'm going to attach the post that I wrote. Now, if you're able to follow this lesson and also look at the post, it will help you. So that way you can follow this lesson. Okay, so if you can, if you can open it up, that will allow you to see it. And I want to share this with you. Okay, so we have Corbyn's Brexit plan, having his cake and eating it. So Corbyn refers to Jeremy Corbyn, who is our opposition leader here in the UK. Brexit, of course, is the Brexit plan. So looking at that first part of your headline, you kind of understand what's going on there. Corbyn, Brexit. All right. 
the last part of that headline can be quite confusing because you look at it and you think, I don't know what they're talking about. Because here you have an idiomatic expression that's included in this headline. Have your cake and eat it. And it also assumes that you have some background knowledge of the topic because you're thinking, well, what's been happening? You know, I know Corbyn, I know the Brexit, but what's been happening? Why have they put these two things together? But even if you don't understand what that headline means, you it doesn't really matter. The chances are that the headline grabs your attention and it makes you think, hmm, I wonder what's been going on. Now, you know, and you might think, yeah, well, I know what's been happening, but I'm not, I can't remember exactly. So when I saw this headline, Corbyn's Brexit plan, having his cake and eating it, I I had a vague idea of what the topic was. I, I remember hearing it on the radio. So, but, but I couldn't remember the full details. So I was intrigued by this idiomatic expression, which I knew about. So I decided to read the full article. Now, I'm not supposing, I'm not expecting you to understand all idiomatic expressions in English. But you could see that photo and you just, you know, there was a cover and I thought, okay, having his cake and eating it. I said, what is that? I'm intrigued. What does that mean? So a headline, which is exactly what a headline is to do, is to attract our attention or as we say in English, pique your interest to find out what, find out more and want to read that article. So we look at that and you think, okay, let me read about it. So you, you decide I'm going to, to read it. Now, as an English learner, how are you supposed to learn that? Because that's quite hard. Idiomatic expressions are always quite difficult. Uh, some idiomatic expressions you will know about and, uh, you know, maybe you're familiar with, you've seen it before. So that will immediately interest you and you think, OK, I'm going to find out a bit more about that. So you then find out. Hi, Paco. Lovely to see you. In fact, Paco, you were the one who said to us that headlines were difficult. So in today's lesson, we're looking at business news headlines and how do you understand news headlines? And so some, a lot of clients will say, you know, how do I, how do I learn to understand business news headlines? And the thing is, it is practice. Like everything in life, it comes with practice. The more you are exposed to reading business news, the more you see news headlines, then the more you will begin to see a pattern and it's important to see this pattern of how news headlines are created and this is the purpose for this class i want to share with you how the headlines in news are created so you need to understand how they are formed and this is not just in english this is often in many other languages and in fact if you if you were to study news headlines in your own language, you will see a pattern. So I'm going to look at the we're going to look at the language of business news headlines. First of all, business news headlines like to use strong words. Hello, good afternoon, Rafat. Lovely to see you. Now, before I start, I'm just going to acknowledge my um, people. Paco is here. I know Antonio is here. Various people have joined, so I'm, I'm delighted. Thank you so much for joining, finding the time to take your time out of your busy schedule to zoom into this class. So let me just have a look. Anyone else I can see? Jasper is here, who is from the Cameroon, but lives in, um, in uh, United Arab Emirates. Sarima is here. Oh, you're in Milan. Viba. Uh, okay, Viva, you just asked me a question that really has nothing to do with this class. If you want, drop me a line in the Facebook message and I'll respond to you. You're asking the difference between lose, loss and loose. That is parts of speech. Yeah, so lose is the verb, loss is the noun and loose is an adjective but has got nothing to do with lose or loss. So have a look in a dictionary. Yeah, always look up at the dictionary and look at what it all means. They're parts of speech. Hi, Path, lovely to see you. Right, let's have a look at the language of business news headlines. Strong words. Headlines often use strong words 
because they want to make an impact on you. Yeah, they want to grab your attention. So a lot of these words could be idiomatic, informal, slang, and forceful. So here's a headline. Move to cap, rip off energy bills. Move to cap, rip off energy bills. Now the two words I want you to look at are rip off. The expression rip off means something that costs more than it's worth. In other words, it means expensive. When we talk about rip-off prices, we mean that it's more expensive than it needs to be. Yeah, so imagine a luxury item. Could, you could decide that it's a rip-off price. I'm not going to pay, you know, £1,500 for that handbag. It's a rip-off. It's far too expensive. So the headline that you see here, which is move to cap rip-off energy bills, they... The headline could be, could read, move to cap expensive energy bills. But it's not, exp it's not as, impact as impactful as to say rip off. Because when, when we talk about rip off, we are talking about some, where somebody, when we say rip someone off, we mean that someone is deliberately trying to cheat you. In other words, they are, you know, that handbag is worth a lot less than 1500 but I'm ripping you off. Yeah, I'm going to make you pay more. Rip off. Thank you, Fatih. Thank you for sharing. Because, so that thank you for helping Maria out. So what's the spelling? Rip off. So it's a phrasal verb to rip someone off. And a rip off is the noun. And then when we have rip-off prices, we use it as an adjective. So it means that someone is deliberately cheating you. And so by using that headline, rip-off energy bills, it suggests that the energy companies are deliberately overcharging their customers. So the moment I have a, the, um, a headline that says, move to uh, cap to cap rip off energy bills I know that um, sorry I'm just trying to write and do this at the same time not a good idea so the rip off I just want to draw your attention to just one move to cap to cap is to limit, but you don't need to know that immediately from the news headline. It's that rip off that brings, draws your attention to this article. Yeah, so that's strong. Let's take a look at another headline where they use strong words. Again, if you are able to click onto this article that I, I've shown you, um, I've shared with you here in the in the notes, then do open it. But it's not really a dishonest transaction. I think that would be a, a bit hard. You know, not, we're not, they're not, because if I say to you, it's a rip-off price, often it could be, it's my opinion. It's not a dishonest transaction. For example, if you see a handbag or you see um, a television that costs maybe £4,000, do you think it's worth it? You might think that's a rip-off. That is far too expensive. Now, does it mean that that company is dishonestly, you know, is involved in a dishonest transaction? No. They've just set that price. But it's your interpretation whether you think that is far too expensive. So, in a way, you're saying, well, that's expensive. But if I say it's a rip-off, you're... You're angry with that because you really think, yeah, you're trying to cheat me. But yes, there's an element of dishonesty, but it's not a dishonest transaction because there's no legal transaction that occurs there. All they're doing is offering you a price. You have a choice whether you want to accept it or not. So it's slightly different. 
Here's another headline with a strong word. Carillion. Ex-finance chief dumped last of his shares. Now the word I want you to think about is dumped. The word dump in this context means to sell large amounts because here we're talking about dump last of his shares. So shares, we're talking about shares in the company. Yeah, so the ex-finance chief, Carillion is the name of a group and the finance chief is the chief of the company. So dump last of his shares. The word dump here suggests selling large amounts. So the headline could have used a more neutral word like sell. So sold the last of his shares, but they choose to use dump because it's not the same as saying sold. Dump is associated with waste and rubbish. Yeah, so and it suggests that it's something you no longer want. So we dump it. Yeah, if you don't like something, just dump it. So that's quite forceful. So he dumps the last of his shares, meaning, you know, you, you no longer want something, so you're going to throw it away. So dump refers to waste, to rubbish, throwing something away. So it's a lot more forceful to say dump the last of his shares. So I looked at, at that headline, I think, oh gosh, why? What's happened? Why were those shares so bad? Maybe you have shares in the same company and you wonder why that ex-finance chief has decided to dump his shares, throw them into the waste bin. Wow, so that draws your attention and that's the purpose of the headline, right? So strong words that rip off, dump. So, you know, looking at the dump your stuff, exactly, Maria, it's dump it. Now just dump it. You know, we talk also about in on the internet, sometimes you dump. It's a, like a dumping ground. It's things you no longer want, you throw. But you know, if someone's going to dump their shares, often if we're talking about in business use, in the business world, if we're dumping our shares, if we're selling our shares, it suggests that there's something maybe serious going on. Now, Carillion, of course, here again, you have to have some context. Carillion is a big company here in the UK who went bankrupt, that went bankrupt in January. So the company went bankrupt. And so if it went bankrupt, it, it went into administration and the ex-finance chief dumps his shares. Now, of course, if a company is going to go bankrupt, um, you want to sell the shares quickly because those shares are going to fall in value. So that immediately thinks, well, dumped. So I need to know about this. So strong words, dump, rip off. So have a look at business news headlines and look at certain words and see, wow, you know, there are some words that you might know that think, wow, these are strong words they're using. Even if you are in your own language, have a look at the business news headlines and look for those strong words they use and think about the neutral words they could have used. Instead, the journalist goes for stronger words. The other way they, um, newspapers um, and business news uh, develop their headlines is they will remove words. They omit. Omit spelled O-M-I-T. Headlines are short. So, which means that headlines have to reduce the number of words they put in the headline. So they will remove words or they leave them out. So for example, let me share with you a headline. Starbucks in Latte Levy, London trial on disposable cups. Let me repeat that. Starbucks in Latte Levy, London trial on disposable cups. So Starbucks in Latte Levy, London trial on disposable cups. Okay, so we don't have a full sentence here. It's quite short. So Gabi is saying, is it similar to selling anyway? Yeah, if you're dumping, it's selling, but it's much more strong. 
Parthi is saying strong words have a lot of connotations. Yes, they have a lot of um, imagery. Yeah. So omitted words. Next one. Starbucks and latte lavi. Levy, sorry, Levy. London trial on disposable cups. From this headline, the full sentence could be Starbucks has implemented or Starbucks has decided on or Starbucks has imposed a latte levy trial on disposable cups in London. So you have this full sentence that would be has implemented or has decided on or has imposed a latte levy on disposable cups in London. So longer, but of course the headline has to be shorter. So they remove certain words. And so when you're looking at it, you need to try and think, well, what would the full sentence be? But they don't need to do that because the headline is supposed to be short. So this is just to give you an idea. So that's your omitted words there. Has decided on or has implemented. So the headline will be short. The article will, of course, give you the fuller sentence. And that's when you can see that. So if you're, you know, what might attract you could be maybe Starbucks, disposable cups, London trial. And you think, ah, oh, what does this mean? Paco, you're saying shop fall on shop price. I'm not too sure I can follow that. What you mean, Paco? Could it be an example too? I need more information from you, Paco. What are you talking about? You're talking about the dump, right? It's not a sharp fall. Oh, you mean you mean that when a company goes bankrupt? Sorry, we're going back to the previous conversation. So omitted words. Remove the words, and so it shortens it. So sometimes that makes it difficult to understand what exactly they mean. So you have to imagine some words. But don't worry. In the beginning, it might be difficult and you can't quite think. So the article will give you more information. And so as you start reading the article, then you get more of an idea. Maria, you're saying keywords to attract attention. Exactly, keywords. Or they remove the words. Yes, and just stick to Starbucks, Latte Levy, London Trial, Disposable Cups. So you can put those two all together, Starbucks, Coffee Shop. Cups, okay, we need a cup. Trial, you might not even know. London, okay, this has to do with London maybe. Latte Levy, buzzword, which I'll talk to you a bit more about later. So you're not too sure, but maybe it's suitably interesting enough for you to read the article. Now, the next part of news headlines is wordplay. So playing with words, word play. Here, newspapers love it and news headlines love playing with words. You know, um, I'm sure when you look at your own newspapers in your own language, there are lots of plays with words. And that's what makes headlines really difficult to understand. Because one, that you, that is assuming you have a language understanding or maybe cultural understanding, even more important, the cultural understanding of some connotations, some connection with the headline. So, you know, they, 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 and they play around with these words. And some of these play, these, these word plays are ingenious and puns. Exactly, Maria. They will use word puns. So again, playing with the words. And some of them are really ingenious. And they can also conjure up, they can bring up some really vivid images that you think, wow, that's such a great idea, I'm going to use it. And of course, we know that a lot of new words, new expressions, new buzzwords come from the media. They come up with these ideas and you come up with this Im image and then you start using them. Later on in, the, in the next week or the week after, I'll be sharing with you some of these buzzwords. Take a look, listen to, not take a look, listen to this headline. AA. So AA. Roadside wreck. So let me write down what it said. AA. 
roadside wreck. Now I saw all these in newspapers and I looked at it and I thought, brilliant. I was reading it and I thought, great. Now, what does it mean? You're looking at this, I'm looking in the business news and I see this. AA, roadside wreck. So maybe you're not too sure, but you think. So what does it, what is AA? So AA, of course, here then, you, you need to have some context. AA stands for, in the UK, the Automobile Association. So the Automobile Association is a very a old association. In fact, when cars were, you know, first invented and they started, it was, you know, it's a very old association where cars could be registered. And um, so the AA offers um, also lots of services to um, for cars. So you have, for example, a recovery service. So if you break down with your car, then you can have insurance with the AA and then someone will come and help you when your car breaks down. And we talk about roadside recovery. So imagine you're on a motorway, you're on the highway, you break down. So you call the AA, the AA comes and they help you fix your car so that you can continue. So it is called roadside recovery, roadside assistance, because it's on the side of the road. So here the connection is with cars. Now remember, we are looking at the business news here, okay? I'm not talking about cars, I'm not in the motoring section of the newspaper. I'm under business news. So the connection is AA, cars, roadsides, now, a wreck, because car crash, imagine you've got cars, roadside, car crashes. Cars are damaged. Cars become wrecks, right? So if you have a road accident, the car is not, you can't drive the car anymore, and so it becomes a wreck, damaged. The business article here that I'm referring to attached this headline to refer to the financial problems the AA, Automobile Association, is facing and reports on the profits warnings it issued the week before. So by using the word wreck, wreck, damage, it suggests the company is damaged. And of course, roadside, they're using the word roadside refers to its core business. The core business being roadside recovery, roadside assistance. Of course, if you don't know what the AA is all about, you're not going to, of course, understand that. But the point about business news is you're going to be attracted to areas of business news that you are familiar with. Yeah, so the AA, I know what the AA is about. I don't necessarily know what's been happening to the AA as a company, but I know what the AA is. So I know roadside because there's that connection to road and what their core business is. And the wreck is the fact that they go and save damaged car wrecks, damaged cars. So see how clever they've used the playing with the words. Then, of course, I go and read the article and it is about the fact that the company is in trouble. They issued a profits warning last week and they're in trouble. So AA as a company, is it a roadside wreck? Is it a company in trouble? Do we need to save it, to rescue it? Play with words. A wreck is not going to be a sudden economic uh, disaster. A wreck can be just, it's damaged goods. Damage, Gabby. So not necessarily sudden. Yes, a sudden will be the accident. But is it a wreck? So if you're thinking about a wreck, a wreck can be a damage. Yes, the, the, the accident causes the wreck. Then the wreck stays there. And so when we're talking about companies, profits warning, this could have been taken over time but it's damaged. So can you see that? I, I mean, I love that play of words. Yes, yeah, so you mean, wow, they've taken the core business and they've, they've, they've connected it with the, the, what's been happening in 
to, to the business of the AA. Let's have a look at another headline. Again, another business news headline to, and linked to another company. Aston Morris revving up. Let me write this down in the chat box. Aston Morris revving up. Aston Morris. Okay, I don't know any of you know the Aston Morris. Ever heard of it? So, if you think of the Aston Morris, there's the Aston Martin. If you think of James Bond movies, he drives an Aston Martin. So I look at this Aston Morris. You might not know it, but okay. But first of all, let's look at the word, the phrase of verb revving up. There are two definitions to revving up. You can rev up a car. A car factory, yes, it's a car manufacturer. Not a factory, manufacturer. Pa. You can rev up a car, rev up a motor engine. Yeah. So when we rev up, it means that you are increasing the speed. So you're accelerating. You know, so you have an engine and you need to rev up the engine. I need to rev it up. Some of us, you know, as we get older, every morning you wake up and you need to rev up this engine, yeah, metaphorically. The second definition of rev up is when we're talking about um, metaphorically is when someone is revving up means they're getting excited. You're revving up for the launch of a new model. Yeah, so may imagine that you're a car manufacturer and you have different models. You have um, designed a new model and you're getting really excited for the launch of this new model. So the company is revving up, it's getting excited, it's preparing and you know they've got a marketing plan and they're doing a lot to, to publicize this new launch. So here the headline, Aston Morris revving up, plays on the words by linking what Aston Morris does, which is to produce cars, with news of the company's announcement that it is back in profit after eight years of losses and is now powering ahead. Now you don't know that all by the headline. I had to read the, I had to read the article to understand it, but the play on words played with the fact that we were talking Aston Morris, car manufacturer, revving up car engine, so all the con connections, car engine, I rev up my car engine, I need to speed it up. But this is in the business news. So what has that got to do with business news about Aston Morris? But because there's that play on words, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. So now I'm going to find out and read the article. And when I read the article, it's telling me about after eight years of loss, losses, now Aston Morris has turned its fortunes around and now it's powering ahead. It's revving up. It's you rev up, you rev up, and then you start, right? You imagine you accelerate and it's getting excited. So it's it's increasing, it's going ahead, it's doing better now after years of making losses. So once you read that article, you then go back to the headline and you think, what a fantastic play on words. Because it immediately gave me an image that had everything to do with what the company is about. Making cars, revving up my engine, but you use it metaphorically, you're revving up the company. The company was bad, but now it's doing well. So, wonderful, ingenious. Now look at your uh, news headlines in your own uh, language. Have a look, take a look of how well, how cleverly they've played the words to get your interest going. So, play on words, really good, and that's exactly what um, newspapers, news articles are good at doing. And of course, news articles, news, the news also introduces a lot of new words. 
And the new words are often quite difficult to understand, but they still introduce them and then they become quite often part of the language. So they're very, they're famous for inventing or what we say coining new phrases. Here are some examples I share. Selfie. Okay, that famous selfie. Well, the selfie came from the media. Now selfie is everywhere, right? We use a selfie. It has become part of our language. Gig economy. The gig economy refers to a lot of us who, you know, people like, for example, delivery services. If you think of Deliveroo, you think of Uber, you think of a lot of where um, they people work on short contracts and it's known as gig economy. Now, this new expression was introduced by the media, by the business news. Photobomb. Yeah, you know, photobomb, you know what a photobomb is? It's like you're taking a photo and then someone comes in at the last minute into your photo. So they photobomb your, 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 your photo. And you say, yeah, I didn't invite you to be in part of my, my photo, but they do. And, you know, some people like to mess, you know, play around and they'll photobomb. And it becomes part of a new word. Post-truth. Yes, we've talked about since the Trump era, era we talk about a post-truth, the world where we have fake news, where you have post-truth. So lots of expressions. I will, as I said, be talking a lot about these new words that are introduced. Now, some of them stay and some of them disappear into the bins of silly words. Yeah, so some new words come and then they go as soon as they've come in. But others remain, like selfie, uh, photobomb, gig economy. Now, remember the headline I shared with you on Starbucks? So the Starbucks headline read, and I'll read it again to you, was Starbucks in Latte Levy, London Trial on Disposable Cups. Now, the word I'm, I, I want to draw your attention to, the two words, is Latte Levy. And you look at the, the word, the two words, and you think, what does that mean? Okay, if you're an Italian speaker, you will know that latte means milk. But, um, but what does this mean in the business news article or this headline? So, we need to understand that a latte, you think Starbucks. So, here's where you start thinking Starbucks. And latte levy is a new word, that has, a new expression that has come into the business press. Here it refers to a tax. A levy in English means a tax. And a levy in the UK government wants to impose a levy, a tax. And it's a small tax on disposable cups that coffee chains like Starbucks uh, use to serve their coffees. Because what they want to do is to reduce the number of disposable cups. So they want to impose this tax. Why do they call it latte? Of course, latte comes from the different types of coffees you can order when you go to Starbucks. You can order a cappuccino, a latte, an espresso, and of course a latte is one of the choices. So what they did was use a latte, levy, put it together and call it a new expression, latte levy. So the levy refers to the tax and the latte refers to this tax on disposable cups. And so they have now introduced this new expression. So when, when you first see it in the headline, you think, I don't understand what that means. But if you like Starbucks and maybe you've heard about it, in the, in the news, you've sort of heard about it and you're thinking, yeah, I think I heard about this. Oh, let me read about it. Yeah, so again, it's expressions that you might have heard of, might have seen it somewhere, and that draws your attention. The first time you see it, it might not mean anything. And of course, it's all about whether you're interested in whatever topic the news is, is about. You're, of course, going to choose news articles that you're inter interested in. Yeah, disposable cups, so the paper cups, 
Disposable means that you can throw them away. You can dispose. Gabi, you read about it in The Guardian. Exactly. Because it's something that the UK government is trying to do to find ways to reduce the number of disposable cups that people have and then we throw away. So then there's a lot of waste. So they're trying to do that. So they want to impose this latte levy on on the coffee chains like Starbucks. Yeah, so to try and encourage people not to, um, to you know, uh, yeah, it's good for the environment. Exactly, Bang. Yeah, so, you know, when you're reading about this, if you're interested in the environment, this is what's going on in, 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 in business at the moment. So, latte levy, you kind of think, yeah, levy is a tax, you might not know it, but latte refers to the, 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 um, the, the type of coffee, the choice of coffee that you can order. So it's lots of, you know, again here, playing with the words and then playing with words and then introducing a new expression. Hi, Jen, lovely to see you. So bang and lovely to see you and thank you for, for sharing. Yeah, so again, have a look at new words that we coin. But as I say, you will you will, I will be introducing you to a series of new words that come along and I'll also show you some resources where you can, if you're interested in finding new words and buzzwords that then become part of business vocabulary, then I will be showing you resources where you can see that. So Bang Jin, you're saying, can we bring your own cup? Yes, and one of the things you're thinking about, one of the strategies is encouraging people to uh, bring their own cups and have it refilled. So what they'll do is maybe they encourage you to buy a special cups. In America, they have a lot of these, you know, you can buy your own and then bring it and maybe they then offer you a discount for bringing your own cup. So that will encourage you as the consumer not to, or a hot flask, exactly. So Gabi, yes, it's a special tax on coffee, disposable cups, not disposal cups, disposable. Yeah, disposable cups. Yes, or a hot flask. Yes, if you want to bring in a lot of coffee. Exactly. And you know, way you can encourage consumers to do that is to bring your own, uh, to, to offer a discount. If you bring your own uh, flask or cup, then I will offer you a discount on that cappuccino, latte or espresso, whatever you do. There's a similar thing that's going on, conversation that's going on with plastic where of course we have a real problem with plastic waste. How can we reduce the plastic around the world? So there are lots of um, strategies and initiatives that are going on and I'm sure maybe in your own country there's conversation that's happening. And how do you encourage businesses to introduce this to encourage their consumers to use less plastic? Right, finally, before we go, gosh, um, time flies, doesn't it, when we're having fun? Verb tense changes. The verb tenses often change in headlines. So, for example, the simple tense is often used to replace the continuous or the present perfect tense in English. For example, let's take a look at this headline. Vauxhall chief warns over Brexit. So the headline is Vauxhall, which is the name of a, a car manufacturer, warns, so Vauxhall chief warns over Brexit. So it uses the simple tense, or warns. But what it actually means is that the Vauxhall chief has warned. Because the warning has already been done. So has warned. But in the headline, it will use the simple tense warns over Brexit. Then when you read the article, it shows you that the Vauxhall chief yesterday warned or has warned of the problems with Brexit. The other verb tense changes we have is the infinitive is often used for the future tense. So for example, here you have this headline. HNA's gate group to list in Switzerland. So HNA's gate group to list in Switzerland. 
Now, to list, when a company lists, it means that they're going to list their shares. They're going public. Yeah. So maybe it was a private company. And when we list in business vocabulary, in business finance, we talk about listing your shares onto the stock exchange. OK, so that's a different meaning. But when I say to list, it means you have the infinitive to list, but it means it's going to. It hasn't done it yet, but it's going to list in Switzerland. It's going to list its shares in Switzerland. So the simple tense often relates to continuous or present perfect. And the infinitive to list is often used for the future. Remember, the headline has to be short, so they cut it off and they change the verb tenses. So when you look at that headline, think, has it been done or is it about to be done? So when you see to do something, to list, to call, to inform, we know it's going to be in the future. It hasn't been done yet. They list, so they list, or they tell, or they warn, then means they have done it. So it's already been done. So the present perfect. So look, look at that. So, and, you know, so understanding, so let's recap the way they create, how head, news headlines create their, their headlines. First of all, they look at, they use strong words. Yeah, strong words will give you impact, will make you want to read the article. Second, they remove words because they can only have short headlines. We don't want very long headlines. So they remove words. Third, they play with the words. Yeah, and they love doing that. They'll use connections and they play with them. Fourth, they use new words. They'll introduce new words. You might never have heard of it, but you think, hmm, never heard of that. I'd like to know more. So that, again, piques your interest. Then there are the verb tense changes. So they might use the simple to mean the present perfect tense, or they're using the infinitive to mean that it's something for the future. It is going to happen. Now, you're going to say, oh, but this is such hard work, Shanti. And you're right. Yeah, of course it is. And understanding business news headlines in English does take time. And it does take practice. So if you want to, like everything, as I said, you have to keep trying. But, you know, don't make it a big problem. Just keep looking at it. And with these sort of ideas of how they've created it, see what they've done in that particular headline to develop that headline, to create that headline. Have they used, used new words? Have they used verb tense changes? Have they used strong words? Um... So, you know, you don't always have to know exactly all the words, but you, the more you read it, the more you see it, the more you keep up to date also with the latest business news, the more you will begin to understand because the more you, you know what's been going on in the business news, you'll see a headline and go, yeah, I know this is, this refers to this, this, this. And you think, okay, great. For example, and here's why I wanted to share another one to just give you an idea. KFC, a finger licking foul up. So here we have it. I have, I'm going to copy and paste this headline and I hope you can see it here. KFC, a finger licking foul up. Now KFC, most of you, many of you may know, stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken. So when you see a headline that says, you think, mm, I think I'm, they're talking about KFC. Finger licking. Finger licking is part of the phrase of the famous slogan that KFC have used for since forever. Finger licking good. So you eat this chicken and you know, you, you feel like you have to lick your fingers because it's finger licking good. So it's the slogan they use. So now, if you've been following the UK news, you may know that in the last week, in the last few weeks, KFC ran out of chicken. Ran out of 
chicken because of logistics problem. They had a problem with suppliers. They had changed suppliers. Um, not suppliers, but logistics delivery firm. And they were forced to close 646 shops. Imagine, because they could deliver their chicken. A foul up, in English, which is informal, which is slang, means a stupid and serious mistake. Now, you don't need to know what a foul up means, but looking at that headline could be KFC, okay, you know, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Finger Licking, yes, I've heard of that because I've seen their slogans. And you might think, okay, maybe I know what this is about. So I still want to see it. So you might not understand the entire headline, but you know enough to want to see it. But it shouldn't stop you from trying to read the rest of the article. Because, okay, I, I haven't understood all of it, but let me find out. And then as you start reading the article, the headline becomes more clear. So one of the things I'd like you to try is... To understand better is often when you look at the headline, ask yourself certain questions. What do I already know about the topic? Have I heard about it somewhere before, somewhere else? Maybe I heard about it on the news or maybe I, 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 someone mentioned it to me. What could this be about? So imagine what could it be about? Just think very quickly. And what English words do you already know from the headline about this topic? You might already know some words connected to this topic, connected to this article. So, you know, ask yourself these quick questions. And then when you start reading the article, you might think, ah, now I get it. Yeah, so you then begin to understand and begin to relate to the article and the headline. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just realized I've got one minute and I know it's late for today's class. I hope I've given you some ideas. Headlines are difficult, but headlines don't have to be impossible. So long as you understand how they've been created and just get into a routine of looking at them, play, you know, just see what they've done, how they've created it, and then use that to then read the rest of the article. You know, so they don't have to be completely impossible to understand. Um, it's still, I love the play on words and I always like that. It is hard if it's not your language, of course, but the more, as I say, the more you read, the more familiar you are to this language, the vocabulary, it does develop your language. So I hope this has given you some idea of business headlines. Have a read of the article that I wrote last week about news headlines and how to understand and, you know, and then find your own headlines that you like, that you see. And you know, just compare that. And, you know, that's where you can develop an interest and um, understand them better. Next week, in next week's class, we're going to be, I'm going to be taking an article and showing you the expressions, the new words and new vocabulary you can learn from just one particular business article. So follow me. I hope you can follow me with me, which will be Lesson 60, when we'll be looking at how to develop and build your new language, your new vocabulary, just from one business news article. I hope that was helpful. Do share with me your news headlines. And if you see any news headlines that are of interest, do share them with me here on the Facebook page and tell me what you think they could mean. And, you know, that way we can share what your, your thoughts are. And only by being creative and seeing that creativity can you then, you know, have a curious mind of how you can understand business headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Um, I know a lot of you didn't get, this wasn't so much of a interactive um, session, but I hope it was helpful and it gave you some inspiration gave you a you know motivation to start exploring headlines and not to be afraid of news headlines business news headlines in english and don't be put off by them don't you know say oh i'm not going to bother it's too difficult thank you so much maria gabi who else was in class today with me keiko um let me know i've seen anas asad 
lots of people who are in there and if i haven't mentioned your names keiko yes thank you so much for joining in i hope to see you next week 21st of march when we'll begin looking at exploring a business news article and looking at the language that you can do you can find in just one article and i'll show you how you can do that in the meantime i hope you have a very good week thank you so much for watching if you know other colleagues and co-workers who would benefit from these classes do ask them to join um and you know continue with the conversations in the meantime ciao for now this is me shanti kumara swami street your business english coach here at english with a twist saying ciao for now bye bye thank you so much i hope i've pronounced your name correctly and to everybody else if i haven't mentioned your name jen everybody thank you so much hope to see you next rafa thank you so much take care everyone and um good english keep learning keep it keep it up keep working on your english it's worth it ciao for now take care